Well, howdy folks, and welcome back to Foxborough Zoo. My name is Salif, and as always, it is so great to have you guys here, especially for this one in particular, because I absolutely love this build. So this is a little bit different, and if you guys follow my thought process here, it's going to be a little bit challenging, but I swear this all makes sense in the whole like grand scheme of things. So, in front of our quote-unquote Faces of the Rainforest building, which yeah, I'm calling that now, because listen... If Roger Williams can call it that, so can I. I, I it, I'm the captain now. You know how it goes? So, in front of this building, I have this beautiful, large, open area, right? And so, the way that uh, the whole South America Trail is designed is that we started off with, like, that Kinkajou and the Capybara habitat. Those were fine. Those were dandy. And then we have this long, open pathway... And then we get to Faces of the Rainforest. And then we have another long pathway over to the Inca Trail. And we also have a nice long pathway in front of Faces. Are you guys sick and tired of hearing me say long? Of course you are. But nonetheless, I wanted to fill it up with something. And I took a little bit of inspiration from our good old friends over at Southwick Zoo. You guys may know about Southwick Zoo. It's the largest zoo currently in New England. has the most species out of all the other zoos. It's just a very, very nice time over there. Uh, big shout out to Concord Forge for the signage of this area, by the way. Absolutely love the guy to death. He is becoming one of my closer Planet Zoo friends in the community. And he knows exactly what I don't about graphic design. And he does such a wonderful job with it. So, of course, I want to integrate some of his designs in here. And, of course, they're going to be strewn throughout the Inca Trail. So, that's going to be really awesome to have once we actually start to get more of that going on forward and forward. But, for the time being, I want to get this little bit of a bird show area. So, if you excuse me while I spit out my mint, that was absolutely disgusting. But, um, no. So, let's talk about this bird area for a little bit. So... I wanted to have a little bit of a bird show, and the whole idea behind this area would that would be that they keep all the ambassador animals in the faces of the rainforest building, and they'll actually bring them out like every so often for shows. So, say for instance, they have them on the weekends, and maybe they'll also have them for I don't know, maybe Fridays are a good zoo day, maybe Wednesdays for like special encounters and stuff like that. I don't really know, but it's just a little bit of a concept nonetheless. I don't know. But still, uh, we can figure that out when we actually get to the signage of that. It doesn't really matter too much right now. But anyways, I did want to develop this like beautiful stage area. And I feel like the stage is going to be probably the most important part of this build itself. Just because, you know, it's what all the guests see when they come to these shows and stuff like that. So, of course, I wanted to make it look beautiful. I wanted to make it look busy. And I wanted to have it be a lot of fun as well. So you can see me start to use Nick's gravel pieces that he included in the safari pack. Half of this build is safari pack at this point. I love it so much. It is so freaking useful. I don't know how he did it, but actually I kind of do because I was with him when he made like all these pieces, but they're so amazing and so versatile. Anyways, I am kind of developing this kind of area where like animals will use a gravel path to like traverse. Obviously they don't do it in game, but it's still kind of like the outline of the actual stage itself and where you're kind of like designed to look and stuff like that. So I have like these nice big pieces over here. I have this big old um, tree trunk and I actually have it become like a bigger tree later down the line. You can see me start to fiddle with the pieces right now. Um, just to kind of like draw your attention towards the center of the exhibit. And of course I wanted to have like some signage up there as well. I also include some of the branches from NDP's faux rock pack absolutely amazing stuff by the way oh my god i love it but nonetheless here i am working a little bit more on trying to get this stuff to work out nicely make sure it's a beautiful stage and of course we should probably talk about the animals that we included here as well we have the tamandua and we do have the uh red rump agouti yes so these guys are small they're vers versatile you can carry them in like a little container or something so it like actually works out in terms of realism and stuff and you can just 
they're pretty nice ambassador animals is what I'm trying to say. And of course I do try and decorate the rest of this with as much foliage as possible. You'll actually see the foliage start to take place in the live portion of this. I will include a little bit of a walkthrough towards the end so you guys keep your eyes peeled for that. But of course it's just a nice little build. I don't know, I really do love how well this one came out. And of course we need to work on some seating as well. The seating is a big pain in my butt. I easily could have done so much more for it. But I feel like, you know, the simplicity of it really does work out in the end of things. So you can see me actually start to form that right now, using the little Frank for scale, and kind of just copying that all around, having it be nice circular, nice and circular, sorry. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. It was just really fun to develop this. I don't know. I just had such a wonderful time with this one because it's not your normal zoo exhibit. It's something completely different, and um, I really wish I covered up those gaps right there. Highest regret, biggest regret, I must say, if I say so myself. But yeah, here I am just working on making sure this all looks nice in the end. I do a little bit of a stairway as well just so we can make sure that the guests can get in and out of here. Of course, I think it still is implied. Um... Correct me if I'm wrong, leave in the future, probably not, because I don't really edit these videos, and I don't even have Foxborough open right now, but I don't think they can get down there. It doesn't really matter, though, because it's just, like, a little bit of an implied area. It would be nice in the future if we do get, like, you know, animal shows and, like, animal ambassadors and stuff. You guys know how I feel about those, like, all those minor features. It'd be so nice from, like, a role-playing perspective. I don't know. I just really like it. And of course, we got to continue on the South American theme. And I feel like I did that pretty well with like the design over there. I have some like temples and I have like all these beautiful bamboo plants and stuff like that. It just feels very, very natural in the end. I don't know. It's just a nice little habitat. But of course, we are doing some tiny, tiny detail work. Uh, Forge actually had the wonderful idea of having like these beautiful uh, aquatic fence rods, I guess. Um, sort of like line the exhibit so because you know guests would probably want to walk right up there but of course we don't want that to happen so I kind of just blockade that off a little bit over there and I do include one in the center as well just so guests can kind of like you know have different perspectives of the show just so it's a lot more dynamic just so that like the birds when they do fly over by the way this has birds <laughs> um just so when the birds do fly over they are able to utilize like a lot of the scene and it gives the guests a lot more of a more rounded out experience when it comes to this and you guys may have noticed i did turn the exhibit probably a little while ago uh just to face the sun a little bit more i feel like that was extremely important when you're working with something like this obviously you'll want to like frame it up pretty nicely that is it that is all i want to mention on that um working on some different seating as well so i kind of have this like I guess this is kind of like the Omega symbol. Um, I just wanted to have it be kind of like rounded towards the center and kind of flat towards the edges, if that makes sense. I don't really know. And of course, just doing a little bit of decoration work up there as well, just making sure the stage seems a little bit busy. I feel like it all came out pretty good in the end as well. So I do include another layer of fences over there. I use the Australian uh, rod fence. I don't know. But like the... Uh, uh, rusted rusted fence there we go i'm so sorry guys i'm so tired right now and it's just such a struggle of voice over all this but i still hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless but still here you see me working on i don't even know what i'm working on at this point oh yeah i think i actually do some the uh center over here um so yeah i want to have a little bit of a center focus over here and i actually do something really fun with the uh, east asia wheel birds as well so they are able to kind of like fly in circles right so i have them going through a loop like i'm have them going through a ring i guess you could say it and it actually works out so well it's so funny looking but, I don't know, just adds to the realism of this, it adds to the story, like, you know, you probably have Squawks the Macaw going and doing his magical little, uh, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this guy, so I'm so sorry, but, <laughs> no, here I had the wonderful idea to actually include the, um, educators, and I used Kai's, uh, pathing mod, free place, whatever, to actually give them a little bit more of unique 
standings. So I have one guy standing on a crate, and I actually hid the pathway underneath the crate pretty well. So that actually worked out very well for me. Um, do pretty much enjoy like how well it turned out. Of course, you can see me work with the little macaw over here. I throw this little bit of a ring over here to fly through. I think it turned out so funny in the end. I don't know. It's just such a nice... It, it's adding to the humor of the place. And, you know, when you're designing zoos, you want to imagine some schmuck downloads this on, like, the Blueprint Workshop. The Workshop, yeah. I don't, I don't even know why it said Blueprint right there. But they're like, you know what? I'm going to explore a zoo today. Let's explore Leaf's Foxborough Zoo. And then they see that they have, like, I don't know where I'm going with this, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. But, no, here I am just doing the rest of the seating as well. Um, I think the seating is actually finished up in this little segment of clips. So I do record these in, like, little bits of different segments because a single build can't contain my mind forever. Especially when I want something to look good for Foxborough Zoo. I need to take the time and effort it needs to kind of, like, make sure it looks nice in the end. The same can't really be said for the uh, dioramas and stuff. As much as I do love the dioramas, they're meant to just be hop in and hop out. It's nice, quick, easy builds. And you know what? I love him for that, but Foxborough, listen, this is my baby, guys. I gotta make sure that Foxborough is treated like the queen she is. But of course, here I am adding the rest of the mulch over here, making sure that, you know, it's nice and soft for the kids to run around in, maybe to sit in and stuff. I don't know. Maybe soon we can include some, like, playground elements over there, just so guests can, like, you know, maybe kids aren't really entertained by the show, so they can go use the playground elements in the back over there, just so they're not disturbing, like, the rest of the guests. And I do have some implied areas for keepers to go as well. Maybe they need stage access, so they go through these doors and stuff. I don't really know. I'm just having fun with it, and it really is fun to make. And, of course, we gotta use the go-away green doors. They look so nice over here. And I have this continue on the other side as well. And here's the very last part of our speed build. I do some work on the exterior of faces as well. And I do a little bit of a planted garden area. I love how well this garden came out. It's so simple. It's just keeping in line with like, you know, trying to have these nice groups of plants work together. And it just looks so nice in the end. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's all there is to it, you know? But of course, we are working with the faux rocks as a trim for this, making sure that we're able to carry on this theme throughout the entire place. And of course, I throw some rocks down in there, but they get covered up by the plants nonetheless. And I do include some saplings just to, you know, really emphasize that this is like a new area. You know, this was just recently built. And I feel like the saplings actually do a pretty damn good job at, like, kind of communicating that, you know? Like, whenever you're at an old part of the zoo, you always see these big, beautiful trees that have seem like they've been there forever. But when you work with saplings, it's like, hey, this area's new, you know? Like, man, they just built this. It feels new. I don't even know where I'm going with this anymore. But you can see me start to include, like, some statues over here. I use the reward statue for the iguana. I feel like it came out pretty well over there in that little, nice little area. Um, and yeah... I'm actually doing a little bit of shade area over here as well. And so I actually do this little canopy going down here. All custom. I love how well this came out. It's so good. I love the colors on it. And I don't know. It was just really fun to build. I love doing big canopies like this and using the bamboo in like different ways. It's so fun to work with, guys. And I really do encourage you guys just to play around with that. Because, you know, sometimes I'm scared of making like custom builds and stuff like this, you know? But it really does pay off in the long run because it's it looks so nice when it all comes together. And of course, if you're building smart, you just gotta know when to use things as groups. For instance, you saw me just duplicate those over there and of course you can kind of make it work for yourself as well so i moved the other one when it wasn't too long enough you know how it goes and of course we're using some thatch as well to really hammer in on that little bit of south american aspect um there it just looks so nice in the end i don't know i really do love this build so much it was so fun too it's nothing like i've ever done before i kind of did like a coliseum back in the day but that doesn't really count 
but I don't know, it's just, it's just really fun in the end. And of course, the place is called Grace's Bird, Grace's Bird Show, which is based off of Grace's Bird Garden in uh, the Australia Zoo. It's a little bit of a joke with my buddy Trico Art. He's been getting a mention in every single video recently. But, um, no, it's just, we love the Irwins over there. But, of course, I wanted to have a little bit of an enter and exit sign, so I include that over there, and I duplicate it down there. Um, trying to think of what else there is to mention, I do kind of, like, bring these down a little bit more, just as, like, some extra railings and stuff, because you are going downstairs. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't handicap accessible. I will look into kind of including some blips like that throughout the, uh, entire place, so, yeah, do keep an eye out for that, but... Anyways, guys, I gotta get going. I really do hope you guys have the most wonderful of wonderful days. And I'll tell you what, I'll see you guys in the next episode of Foxborough Zoo. Take care, and have a great one. Bye-bye now.